close your eyes and think of some of the most unforgettable movie sounds. The menacing hum of a lightsaber being ignited, the eerie gurgling from the grudge, or the spine-chilling roar of the T-Rex in Jurassic Park. Among these iconic sounds, the T-Rex roar is truly special. If you think dinosaurs actually sounded like that, you have been lied to. How did this roar become so legendary, and what would dinosaurs really have sounded like? Evidence suggests that dinosaur vocalizations were not likely to have sounded like roars at all. Have you ever been curious about the true sound of dinosaurs? Let's start by discussing why it is so difficult to discern the sound of dinosaurs. Sound waves do not fossilize like bones do. What we know is based on research on the morphology of their fossils and the closest living relatives. With these sounds, most media, including the venerable Jurassic Park franchise, takes artistic license. Thus, is it fair to blame them? In those days, we didn't know a great deal. Our knowledge has grown over time as a result of technological and paleontological discoveries. First up, the Tyrant Lizard King, or T-Rex. The famous roar in the movie was actually produced by combining the recorded squeals of a baby elephant, the gurgles of an alligator, and the snarls of a tiger. However, new research indicates that the T-Rex probably made low-frequency noises, just like modern huge birds and reptiles do. Current evidence supports that Tyrannosaurus rex made closed-mouth vocalizations, but in the films, the Tyrannosaurus opens its mouth every time it roars, states the Carnegie Museum of Natural History. One place to start if you're curious in what dinosaurs might have sounded like is with their two nearest living relatives, birds and crocodilians which are cousins of crocodiles. Given that these two animals' types' vocal organs differ, thus their vocal capacities most likely changed when the two groups became independent. Crocodilians have vocal folds in their throats called larynxes which vibrate to make sound. Additionally, birds' chests include syrinxes which are essentially small chambers encircled by an air sac. Paleontologist Julia Clark has employed computer models to replicate these noises, fusing emus, alligators, and even crocodiles' vocalizations to mimic the T-Rex's cries. Pitch falls more until it gets closer to the infrasound range. Similar to how infrared light typically has a wavelength too long for humans to see, infrasound waves vibrate so slowly that they can be difficult for people to hear. Therefore, many of the sounds made by dinosaurs may have been difficult to hear if they really had a very low-pitched crocodilian voice. Larger bodily components may have vibrated in response to this sound, but ear hairs are too little to do so. Before you hear the sound, picture yourself experiencing those vibrations. Much more terrible than our familiar roar. The Parasaurolophus, distinguished by its unique crest, comes next. After finding a well-preserved skull in 1995, researchers used CT scans to build a three-dimensional model of the skull's crest. They were able to approximate the noises this structure produced by creating an airflow simulation. These dinosaur skulls featured a long crest that held air tubes that served as amplifiers for sound waves. These creatures' whole skulls have been found and restored by researchers. Amazing, isn't that right? These noises like a primordial symphony and are eerily beautiful. But remember that this is just an estimate soft tissues that were not fossilized might have had an impact on the final sound. Let's now discuss the Pinacosaurus, an ankylosaur that had an unexpectedly high vocal range. Its fossilized larynx was discovered recently, and this suggests that it was capable of producing a variety of noises such as grunts and chirps. Pinacosaurus is considered to be the most primitive member of the Ankylosaur subfamily, Ankylosaurini. 
Among all the late Cretaceous Theriophora, it is one of the most studied and is known from a wealth of fossil material. After examining a Panacosaurus larynx, scientists have deduced that this armored dinosaur was most likely able to make a range of noises, including calls. Based on these remnants, scientists have deduced that Panacosaurus was able to produce a variety of vocalizations similar to crocodilians and birds. The sounds could have served a number of purposes, such as defining territory, threatening predators, warning others of their approach, or finding a partner. This Ornithischian dinosaur may have used its calls for courtship or even to entice young to join them. Imagine the sounds of chirping produced by a two-ton armored dinosaur. It's both intriguing and a little perplexing. Now picture yourself in a lush, ancient forest, listening to the deep, rich cries of a Brachiosaurus. With its long neck stretching high into the treetops, this enormous omnivore most likely spoke in rich, booming tones. Brachiosauruses may have created strong, low-frequency noises that vibrated through the earth, enabling them to communicate with their herd even miles away. Much how elephants utilize infrasound to stay in touch over great distances. This gentle giant's method of communication would have been audible through the ancient landscapes in the form of booming calls. Even though the precise noises produced by dinosaurs are unknown, scientific studies and the vocalizations of their contemporary descendants have helped us to make the best educated approximations. It's crucial to remember that even the most thoroughly studied sounds are still merely educated guesses, so be wary of these recreations. Recall that the discipline of studying dinosaur vocalizations is always developing. With new discoveries, our current understanding of accuracy may not hold true. How do you feel? Which do you find more fascinating? the low rumbling chirps and rumbles that have been scientifically substantiated, or the spectacular roars from films like Jurassic Park. Let us know in the comments, and if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Until next time.